Hey everyone, it's John Dezayas here from The Automator, and today we got a really fascinating hot topic. We're going to talk about the current state of AI and chat uh, GPT-3, you know, how we can use it, what it can and can't do. So stick around because there's some really interesting stuff. The one thing I will caveat is, hey, this is at right the early stages of this tool, right? Like yes. in other tools that are out there. So things are going to be changing like crazy. We're mostly going to be talking about what, you know, it can't do at the moment, but that's definitely going to change. That's correct. And uh, basically, one of the things is that um, the rate as, at which AI learns and gets better is so fast that maybe one one week from now, all of what we're saying right now is like obsolete right. because it learns so fast. So uh, take everything we say like, yeah, it's right now. It might not be like that later on. Yeah, one of the first things we'll just jump into saying it, it can't do is, uh, of course, it can't just do things it was programmed not to do. You know, it reminds me, what what movie is it where they're like androids have, you know, a set, uh, like, let's see, Star Trek Next Generation. They had a core things that androids couldn't do, harm a human, this, that, or I can't, yeah. uh, right? And it's kind of the same thing, although I've seen videos where, you know, if you just say, hey, we'll just say I'm I'm role-playing and I'm making up a game you know, or a video, I'm, I'm recording a script for a movie, um, then it makes it pretend, and then some of the things you can get around, but um, like cursing and swearing and hate, you know. Hate stuff. speech, and yeah, there's a, a lot of things that when, when you look the, at the documentation, they say we, we purposely limited how this particular chat AI works. There are different models, and that is something that I don't know if uh, you have mentioned before, or, but basically... Right. There's different models. There's one that is for creating images. There's another one that is for creating text. This one for creating text is a subset of a larger one. This one that is open right now is a subset of a larger model. And this subset is limited in a lot of things. Like, for example, you cannot tell it, write a, a violent poem or something like that. It would, it would actually just say, hey, I'm, I'm trained not to do that. But as you mentioned, there are ways to circumvent some of the things. Which, uh, yeah, okay. But the main limitation is, it's very unlikely that you will be able to break out of certain restrictions that the programmer, the programmers at OpenAI put onto the chat itself. So yeah, that's one of the things that it cannot do. So another one, so this came up because Ray mentioned it, I think in a, either one of our live YouTube videos, which we have every Friday, I'll put the YouTube, uh, the link up above if you want to join, um, or we also followed up on it in one of the hero calls. So uh, we have our private groups that aren't streamed to YouTube, but we were chit-chatting about what can it do, and Ray asked Isaias to, to log in and to do some stuff, and Isaias was doing it, and, and again, I mean, you know, Isaias has really good English, but he's not a native English speaker, and the right. way he was asking the question at the time it was just slightly, slightly different than what I did. Um, and I forget exactly what the case was, but I'm a native English speaker, right? And I asked it a slightly different question and it was able to do, I said something like, when was auto hockey first created? And I think you said, when was auto hockey created? If I maybe it was something right. like that. And, when it was released. Yeah. So it, it can only do what you ask it to do, right? So this is where... And in my background in market research also in training to say, I want a very specific question I want answered, right? The more specific you are, the, the more likely that you will get a good answer. Right. The, the way how you phrase the question is very important because it would do exactly what you mentioned there. So if I, because I said, when was AutoHotKey released? Only like that. And it said, like, I cannot answer that. But probably what you said is, when was our hotkey first released? And then it had the answer to that. So for me, it told me that it couldn't, but it was just the way how I phrased the question. So, and that is um, another thing. The chat AI program is not really meant for answering questions. It generates text based on a prompt. Now, if your prompt is a question, it would generate text that looks like an answer, and that is something a, a, a kind of like a like a, a a minor point. It's not like that important, but it's good to mention it. It's not an answer, so sometimes what it gives you might not be correct. It's just that it looks like the answer because that's what it was trained to. Now we can get that text and either modify it or extract the truth from that comment, but it is a very fine line between okay, generate a description for a product and it would generate text that looks like the description of the product. 
But when you look into it, really, you might find words that are, have nothing to do with the product. Yeah, because it's not really giving you a true statement. It's just giving you something that looks like the truth. So you have to be very careful with that. But of course, you say like, yeah, you can ask it any question. It would answer. <laughs> it, it can. It, it, it will answer something. <laughs> I actually asked it, uh, you know, what's the difference between men and women in <laughs> you know, or how do you satisfy a woman or what do women want? You know, I actually answered. I was disappointed because I thought I was going to break it. Um, because no, one, no one knows, but it, uh, it did answer. But to your point is a, so what I would say, what I kind of think of it is, look, you got a really, really smart, like high schooler, right. And you can ask them a question to do something. Now, sometimes they come back with amazing stuff. Sometimes they, they, they went and looked up something on, on Wikipedia and totally went the wrong direction, right? Like, and that's your point. Like, look, we're not going to take what they what it gives us and go give it to a client and sell it, right? right? Because we need to review what it does. Now, actually, you, one, you were doing a GUI and you said, create a GUI doing this. And it gave you like 90, 95%. And you're like, no, no, no. You you forgot to add the new GUI. I forget what was the The GUI submit, right? To get the values. And it said like, okay, yeah. And it added no. it. <laughs> so yeah. And then and you said, you forgot to add this. So add it. And then it did. And then it worked, right? But it yes. was like, hey, again, it was close. Now here's the other, again, this is right now. It's not trained on auto hotkey code, right? right? But clearly, and especially we're talking about the chat GPT one, but there's other ones. What was the Da Vinci? The codex, is that right. Well, it, there is a model that is a codex. So the whole thing, the whole system, they name different sections of it with different names. There's one that is called Codex Da Vinci 002 or something like that. And that is a specific model trained for creating code. Right now, the one that we are using is the one that creates chat. So this one is meant for you to talk to somebody technically, not write code. It will give you code, but that's not what it's meant to do. If we use the other model, I would be almost certain that it would give me amazing code because it's meant for creating code, right? Well, and, but, and yeah. again, though, which is the, what you and I both totally agree on this. Look, it needs to be trained on that language, you know, programming language or whatever language, right, for that matter, right. in what you're doing. And it's not yet sanctioned where it's coming up with these solutions that like thinking out of the box and coming up with new approaches. Right. But at some point, so auto hockey, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't some of these other ones that you're mentioning. We, we don't know. And there's so many out there. The problem is, you know, who knows? Um, <laughs> but at some point it will be right? And, right. and we'll be able to create some really cool looking stuff. So let's get into some of the stuff that it can do and can do really well. Um, right. Definitely. And you know, we we were just doing some basic tests of of asking it to do some simple stuff, even in auto hockey, and it was getting pretty close, right? And I that. like that it always creates kind of like a little comment of what it's trying to do. And so, so the code that comes back not only is the code that you're gonna try to use, but it's also the code that um, it also is commented code. So if you're learning, I think that's a very good thing because it, it gives you code and it gives you an idea of what it is trying to do in which steps and so on. So you might learn a little bit faster like that so, way. And to follow up on that, I, so I have two takeaways from that that I was playing with. It was one, I took a large auto hockey script and I pushed it in there. And I said, please annotate this script. And oh. it went through and was explaining what the auto hockey code was doing, right? So if you're a lazy programmer like me and you don't annotate your code or <laughs> you get something from Just go ahead and Isaiah <laughs> or Mace or someone you know, that's really smart, Hey, and they didn't annotate, just just run it through there, right? And maybe you right. can help understand. Right. Um, so that's one. The second um, one is you can actually tell it, and again, it has to be programmed uh, for your language, but to say, hey, you, know, you can put in your code and then say, summarize this for me. What is this thing doing? What right? is this and, doing? Yeah. And it's, it's, I'll put the URL up above here, but um, you know our our script for inspecting AutoHotKey. Right. Yeah, the okay. script scanner. Yeah. That's why I thought like, man, if we can bind this. Oh, right. I, I understand to, to just a, a little bit of a box there, say, right. having a summary as well. So right. it is not only showing you what we yeah. determined that is kind of like risky or whatever, but actually right. a short description or summary of what it's actually doing. Yeah. That is a very interesting approach to that. Yeah. yeah. And, and then complement it with also adding the annotation as well. Right. So that yes. could be a full process. And holy cow, suddenly 
you feel much better when I get some random script that like I can have a decent idea, no matter of my skill level, right? What it's right. as long as I'm willing to read through all the all the stuff. <laughs> Depending on how big the script is as well. Uh, just imagine trying to pass uh, uh, the uh, the QAP code to it, fifteen thousand lines of code. I actually considered <laughs> doing that as a test. Um, yeah, to see what happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I would I saw, say one more. Uh, sorry on this is I saw um, people with using JavaScript code saying, hey, there's a bug in my code, and they pushed it in there and said, can you tell me where the bug is? And it actually came back, and, and even not only did it fix it, but it annotated and said you had a typo here, you know, and, and actually let them know, you know, a what the error was, was. right? Like, hey, <laughs> hey, idiot. Uh, but yeah, I that was pretty cool. I actually think it would be funny to tell it, tell, uh, grab this code, find the bug, and using a very cheeky yeah. <laughs> thing. Tell so, me what my errors were because actually it, it yeah. understands different models, right. different modes of speech. So you can so, tell it, explain it like I'm five and it would explain right. to you like you're a five-year-old five person. Right. So I, I was watching one this morning and they were talking about, they had people just like us discussing mm -hmm. a topic. They asked the AI to say, hey, have these two guys, which they mentioned them by name, discuss this, but in a Quentin Tarantino movie. And so they showed the dialogue that came back. Yeah. And one of the guys said, well, this isn't really real because there's there's no F-bombs. There's no swearing. And then someone else said, but wait a minute, that's because right now. It is. It is. Yeah, it's been told it not is, to do that. Right, exactly. Otherwise, it really adapted it into that kind of format of this, how they speak and how they discuss stuff. I remember, I remember telling it, write a poem in Victorian English, <laughs> something like that. And it does it. And it, it, it I was like, and I asked it, how did you know that by Victorian English, I meant that? And it explained me exactly what it did to go ahead and think about that that way. So I do think that it is very fun to do those kind of tests. The only thing is that now going back to the matter of code is that two things. It, right now, it cannot execute out of hotkey code, right? It cannot do that. I am not 100% certain that it can execute JavaScript code because I've noticed that I gave it a function and it actually ran the example for me and it was executing that. And I would understand that because the browser has JavaScript in it. Mm -hmm. But if um, it doesn't have an auto hotkey interpreter there, so it cannot execute the code, but it can give you something that would pass tests. And that is interesting because what one of the things that we were testing, and maybe we can show a little bit of that, is that I give it a little bit of stuff. Yeah. Right. So one of the things is that I could probably just give it what I'm expecting, and it would generate auto hotkey code that would pass that test. Now, I'm sharing my screen right now, and you would see that, again, this is part of what I meant. There are some limitations, and these limitations, it is very hard to go around them, but here's the one that is more inf important. It may occasionally generate incorrect information. Yeah, of course. It's not a knowledge base. It's just re giving you things back. So you have to be careful with what it gives you. But here's something. I would give it a test. It's an if statement that runs a function and is comparing it to whether that is returned by the function or not. So if it is returning it, it should say true. If it is not, it should say false. So I'm going to give it this as a test and let's see what it does. So I say, write um, an auto hotkey function that passes the following test. And then I'm going to give it some code. I'm putting these little uh, carrots there just to uh, imitate that, that this section is code. This is from Markdown. And I think the the chat really would do something. It. Yeah, it knows that this section here is code and it's not just text. So I would give it some code. I specified that it has to be out of hotkey because sometimes it might not give you the code that you want because it would give you kind of like um, JavaScript code. It defaults to JavaScript, I've noticed. Now, notice that it gave me a function that would do exactly what I told it. It will return just that exact text and it would pass this text. If I copy this into my script here and just copy the function it gave me, 
it should return true right there. Um, let me see, hold on. Except inside a function, where? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, let's change this to a message box because I'm not inside a function there. There we go. And it shows me the true here. So it means that the function is returning exactly the message that I told it to. So that is okay. But one of the questions that we had is, what about if I pass it a more complex test? <laughs> and it was funny because I had some tests written for another uh, program that I had. And one of the things that it does is that it cleans a string. I pass a string and it removes some things from it. So my test is asserting that in the title, I do not have this little character. Or in my title, I do not have this little part. So this is just the test. This is not the function. I copy this and say, hey, write some our hotkey. Um, uh, write an auto hotkey function that would pass the following tests. And this is still, I want to reiterate, the better you are at being very clear in what you want it to do, the more likelihood that you'll get, you know, the answer you're hoping for. Right. So I pass it an array of tests. I'm going through each of them. I pass the clean title uh, function, and it would return a title that should be clean of those three elements. And now this thing is going to try to do something similar. Right now, I don't know if it is going to do a good job of it. You, you know, one of the really cool things, though, which we've talked about before is with AutoHotKey, regular expressions, hey, it, it uses the, was it the Perl? No, um, the, starts with the P. Right. Uh, the version of the regex that we um the, uh, yeah it's the php version of it right uh, but, but that is something that probably is in this because that's you know a very yes popular. that is correct so now it's funny because the code it gave me is almost pinpoint what i did in the end so when i was working with this i had my own function but if you take a look at it it just grabs the string that you gave it and then it will use string replace to remove this character. Then it will pass it to the next one that it will remove this other. But then it noticed that what I passed it was a regular expression. So instead of string replace, it used regex replace, which is correct. And then it removed that too, and then returned the title. This, if you look at my original function, if I go here, my clean title is basically three steps of that. Um, is again the regex the string replace for that one. I use regex replace mostly for the others because of the spaces because I wanted to make sure if they were there or not. But it did basically the same code that I had, which is amazing. And I just gave it a test to pass. Right. Um, this is interesting because uh, some uh, in the future maybe you just have to write the test. And the, the, and the AI will come up with the function that will make sure that passes the tests. So you don't have to think about the solution. You just think about the requirement, right? Well, Which is great. I, that's what I was going to say was I, I'm, you know, not now we're, we have a link to the test. I'll put up here with test driven code and, and, you know, what right. is, is talking about here? So it's a bit advanced or, or new for most people, but um, using regular expressions, you and I both know right, regex can, can be quite complicated, right? Yeah. And when we have something that is complicated, often what what I even you're much better than I am, but even for both of us, I've seen both of us do it, where we say, "I could combine all this into one regex." However, instead, I'm going to piecemeal it one at a time, just because it's easier for humans like to understand and process. Right. But I think we, I think this would work really well to say. I want to remove this and this and this and look for this. And it probably would write a crazy powerful regex. You know. Wow. This is interesting because look at this. You see, on my tests, on my tests, I passed it a title that contains the Zs and it contains the numbers, right? But um, right here, when I saw what the code did, it, it added a comment that it says remove notification numbers from the title 
and it gave me an example of what it would remove. That was something that I didn't put there. I, and again, you can see that it was not me because those are not auto hotkey comments, right. but it actually told me what it was going to try. And it gave me an example of what this regular expression would remove from it. So this is amazing. I really uh, think that this is kind of like the future of coding. People think that probably you are not going to code anymore because the AI is not going to... No, I don't think programmers are going to go anywhere now because now we have to tell the AI what to do. <laughs> Our job is going to be creating the right. prompts for the AI to create the code. <laughs> right. And then reviewing it after, right? Right, even, of course. Even after a couple of years, I, depending on what you're doing, you're, you're going to need to make tweaks and, and you need to be better at explaining what exactly what you're looking for, right? But it definitely is a huge enabler, right? It's going right. to level up people like there's no tomorrow, right? It's I actually uh, think that's correct. For example, in one of the tests that we did was this. I gave it this other test and it didn't really return what I was expecting. Let's try it again. So write a function and auto hotkey function. Which this is where you start realizing certain things are so important to mention, right? Right. It, it has to be an auto hotkey okay. because if not, it would go ahead and give me a right. JavaScript one or something like that. But that also would... we've talked about how training too, like after you do this over time, it will learn and understand. And probably if you have a profile, right, that you log into, it maybe there'll be a way to default it to certain things as well, right? Like, I would assume so, yes. So now I just gave it this test. The test is that I'm going to pass it a URL and I want to remove unwanted things. Um, for me, the things that I want are just from the K here up to the CRID. Anything else should be gone. But what it did is, oh, wow, this is, this is different to what I was, right. what it gave me before. Well, we were talking about it. Uh, we wondered if it would if it would understand key value pairs and the fact that right. it's actually parsing the URL. And right. can we mention, you know, the key value pairs, keep the first one or keep, you know, whatever this key and this key, but, and mm -hmm. the value, but not other ones. Like, which is the other really important thing to understand is it's iterative. You can comment after it and say, hey, that's great, but go back and make and this do change. this another. See, yeah. so, so right now, um, it is telling me it is doing some things that I'm okay. So if the part is not that and not this, which is interesting, now it's, it would do it. This is not auto hotkey code, by the way. <laughs> so this is wrong right here. Sure. Almost, almost word. But um, I would, it gave me something. It grabbed the two sections that I want to remove. And if it is not those things, then it is going to append it to the URL. So this code is closer to the, what I was expecting. The last time that I tried, it didn't give me that. It just removed this one section right here. But now it's removing the two that I want to remove. It just removed both because this is only adding to the cleaned URL if it is not those two things. So this is good. I would tell it, that is not out of hotkey, out of hotkey code. Convert the above script to auto hotkey. Let's see what it does. But basically, this is what you mentioned. We could actually create a follow up prompt and it would know that the context is whatever it did before. Well, so it's, it's really good because it would try to get that. The, the other thing I um analogy i thought actually that was what i saw also is it's a, it's amazing at doing analogies uh, which was right. really interesting but anyway was i've been using uh, an alexa echo for okay quite a long time now i'm pretty good at getting it to do what i want because my brain has now been converted into knowing how to ask questions in the way that it will give me the answer i want okay. i think over time people using this tool, right? It'll get better understanding in the native speaking, but at the same time, we will get better at asking questions in a certain way, in a very specific way that it'll do better delivering answers. Wow. It, and actually I was, when it started writing, I said like, oh, this is totally wrong. But what it did is that it keeps the original clean title script. And now it's giving me the clean URL as well. And it fixed it a little bit. Now it's doing a little bit closer to what I want. And um, 
Yeah, the four Again, this four, stuff. this this is still not correct. Right. It's close, but is is I I could change this to a loop. So this section, and this is what I, what we meant. Probably the code is not one hundred percent what you need, but now I just have to change it for loop part well, length. You could, I think you could use a for loop there as well. It's it's the um, um, no because this is a number length. This is gonna be giving me twenty. It's just a number. Yeah, but, but the, I the, could the use the parts. Yeah, I would use parts by itself. I could say by uh, for anyway. We don't have to get into the nitty gritty parts, right? right. But yeah. you know what I mean is I don't have to change that mo much of the code because now I just say i equals a index, and that is closer to what I need. Okay, so this is great. I really like the idea of me giving it something. It gives me a basic starting point. And the parts that I have to fix are very small. So yeah, the things that I didn't want to change the I in every single no, one. But why wouldn't you? Why don't you just use a for loop with the for I in, and then use the I as the index? As well, that is correct. That that's actually for I, and then uh, part in parts without the length. That would do it. Right. And then I would have the I already as an index. Right. That's anyway, correct. like I said, there's a lot of different ways. Not the focus of the video, but right. But in general, the, it, the point is that you can start now, with a basic template back, for which you can go ahead and and work from there. So go back. I want to do an example here real quickly. So and then so I wrote a like you know, should I do web scraping with auto hotkey? <laughs> so what? doing. Asking questions on general topics, so not programming, but this thing, like I was blown away at the answer. I wrote something close to that, and it wrote like almost identical to what I think. It's like, <laughs> hey, web scraping is a pretty complex topic. And even though you can web scrape with auto hotkey, you're probably better if you're doing a lot of work to. Yeah. To, you know, there, there it is. There it is. Uh, you yeah, know, like, like, is it possible to do it? Like, yeah, I could not have written a better answer myself on this. Like, it was nailed it. Yeah, it's exactly. If you just need a few pieces of data, then auto hotkey may be a good choice. It's easy to learn and use. It could quickly extract information needed from a website. However, if you're planning to do large scale web scrape and you and you, you need more complex data, then there are some other dedicated tools, which is correct. There are that's, tools yeah. that are just for that. Then yeah. that's the best. That's the best tool. Now, here's the thing. Remember, this thing is not answering you. What it's doing is that it grabbed this prompt and it looked at all the text that it has in memory and looked for the one that matched a little bit better to that. While this looks like a true answer, you have to be careful because it might tell you a few things that are not exactly correct or something, but there, it is answering back to what it has in memory. I, so, I asked a, a, um, a question about should I use Anahaki V1 versus V2 or something along the lines of that. And it was it went off on how V2 is absolutely the right this and that. And I'm like, I don't really agree with you know, <laughs> the, the answer there. Um, but again, you know, and I I wrote one saying, hey, should I use auto hotkey versus Python? Um, or why should I use auto hotkey over Python? And it explained the differences and how they're used, right? One is more of a desktop automation and one's more server side things and and this and that. And I'm like, this is, it's it's really, really good. But to your point, it can be wrong. But it's just that, that wow. the majority of the text out there contains those answers and it's grabbing the majority of it no. and summarizing it into this. Yeah. So to your point is, is one, what one might argue is when you think the wisdom of the crowds right, yes. of, of is, is going to give you the right answer, then right. It, it'll be a good solution when, when right. it might be something very, very niche and, and there might be an expert that knows how to do something. Right. You know, it, it, yeah. It may not come up with that. Right. That is correct. I, that's the, the other part that I agree with. So I think this topic is really interesting. I think it's going to be developed you know, quickly. So soon, a lot of the things that it cannot do will be done. Uh, and the things that it does right now will be done better. <laughs> so I think it is a very good direction. And I definitely don't think that programmers are going to be out of job. Now our jobs are going to be different. It's going to be creating the right prompt 
for the tool to create the right code, which looks easy, but well, is not. <laughs> I'd even say, Isaiah, we will probably start working in many more languages because now I don't have to know Python or JavaScript. I can use this tool to get me close because you and I, have, we've talked about this a lot, like in Python, hey, I can go in and, and I, I'm not, or C sharp, right? I can go in and I can tweak things, but I can't write from scratch, right? But I can right. tweak things. So I could probably take some code, get it from there, get it running, but I don't have to know the ins and outs of every little thing, right? And, and this tool is going to be brilliant for that kind of stuff. That is correct. So I hope you all enjoyed. The other thing that we didn't even touch on is all the other stuff. Like I've been going and optimizing my uh, headlines and titles and stuff. It's it's really powerful. You know, at the it's very conversive and can write some really good clickbait stuff. <laughs> That's for sure. So thanks for everyone. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, how are you guys using it? What what is your experience? I'd love to hear in the comments here if you're using it. Where do you think it's going? Also. What kind of timing do you think, at least for AutoHotKey, like getting it in there? Do you think, I think in the next year, we'll have it with AutoHotKey and doing a lot of really cool stuff because you're saying, as I said, I mean, like it's it's easy to get hung up in time as how humans work, but computers, it's it's just off Exponential. The yeah, that's exponential. So it goes really fast. There you go. Please like the video if you learned something, enjoyed it, because it really helps us out. We get a lot more views for people liking it. So I really appreciate it. if you like that. Hit it now, hit it now. Um, and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. <laughs> We dump out videos at least twice a week, sometimes more, depending on the topic. And we're by far the largest auto hockey channel, uh, creating some really cool stuff. So thank you.